Yeah, this all, Bob, may sound very scary uh, as you start looking at your 401k, looking to see how much you might have lost. That last suspect was taken into custody just within the last few hours. Yeah, not long ago. Let me show you how all this happened, Vanessa. There's that house that you're talking about where you can see the garage door has been smashed out. That's where those two innocent women were killed. This is the letter everyone's so upset about, and it clearly states that this hearing has already been moved to late September. Well, those who live in the area where this shelter would be moved to aren't having it. Today, the Democratic presidential candidates will face off in the Nevada caucuses, and voters in South Carolina will now head to the polls for the Republican primary. At one point, he actually made his way out the door into the hallway here, but then someone spotted him knocking on the door, trying to get back in, calling for his mommy. The boy's mommy is defense attorney Alicia Warner, who needs representation of her own now after her son was seen wandering the Osceola County Courthouse halls. She made statements indicating that she had left the child in an attorney break room on the fifth floor, had gone back several times to check on the child, but had gone into the courtroom. Investigators say it was all captured on surveillance. Warner was seen taking the boy into the lounge, then leaving for 20 minutes to argue a case in courtroom 5F. She checked on the child, then left again for an even longer time. The time frame is the child was without uh, his mother for over 45 minutes. And that's only because deputies found her in a family court waiting room two floors below her wandering son. She should definitely know the law and, and know better than doing that. This mom was watching over her toddler at the courthouse today. How old you say? Two. <laughs> And I definitely wouldn't leave my home. We couldn't find Warner today at her house. I'm uh, looking for Alicia Warner. Or at the state agency where she works. Her boss had no comment, but the Florida bar told me they'll be keeping a close watch on this case. Initially, Warner told investigators that she simply lost track of her son for a few minutes. When she got into an elevator, the doors closed and the child was left behind. But those security videos from the courthouse told a very different story. Reporting from the Osceola County Courthouse, Steve Barrett, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Courtney Lanier is searching for his great-grandfather. Harvey Lanier is buried in these woods somewhere. Lanier spends his weekends chopping through history, one branch at a time, and he's already found plenty of surprises. And when I looked down, I saw the last name Grice. And then when I came and looked at it again, Leslie Grice, and she was my next door neighbor when I, when I was a young Man growing up in San and it's not just Courtney's history, it's our nation's history. The man buried in this crypt gave us one of the most famous marketing lines ever. Drew Mundini Brown, he was um, Cassius Clay's corner man, came up with the thing, uh, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He came up with that? Yes. Bodini, tell him, what are we going to do? We're going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah! That's right, the man who wrote many of the poems Muhammad Ali used to taunt the competition is buried right here in this Sanford plot. Just months ago, it was lost forever, if not for those who care. So when we started, you can even see that there were graves back in here. This is a mess. Oh, wow. Courtney and a group of dedicated volunteers come to the Page Jackson Cemetery two Saturdays a month, and almost every time they come, they find something special. This plot, for example, is the family of Zora Neale Hurston. Hurston, of course, is the famed black folk artist and author who claimed Eatonville as her home. In fact, these woods are filled with this kind of African-American history. So what's discovered here brings immediate attention from local historical societies. I was going to Winn-Dixon, and he texted me. And I just made a U-turn and came on because I had to see it for myself. Mm -hmm. What might lie beyond the next branch is what motivates these volunteers. A lot of veterans back here. Just found a World War II veteran again. Uh, this uh, particular crypt over here was the crypt that interred the body of the first postmistress of Seminole County. History lost for a brief time, but never forgotten or unrecoverable. Maybe great grandpa Harvey is next. I think he's buried somewhere back that way. And I know I'm fine. In Sanford, Steve Barrett, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Not only is this the scene of Corey Steinert's alleged crime, but these are his neighbor's cars. He lives here. So you can imagine they're not too happy with him right now. It happens, we're gonna dump this big thing of ice into the Today we found this online video of Orlando firefighter Corey Steinert doing a good deed. <laughs> the ice bucket challenge. But this is the crime he's accused of now, smashing up 18 cars in his own home parking garage. Come out here and I see that this car is like, you know, smashed in and then my car has a little like, you know, 
a dent on the side. Today, Orlando's fire chief said they're launching their own investigation, but Steinert is still working. At this time, it, that, that is, it's being investigated, and until the investigation complete, he's... He's, he's on a, not administrative leave, but he's on investigation at this time. An arrest affidavit says a witness told police Steinert almost crashed into him, then was chasing him and trying to hit him. Steinert allegedly climbed out of his truck, photographed here after the incident. The witness described a blank stare and said the driver may be intoxicated. Not the kind of behavior residents of the lofts at Soto expect from a firefighter neighbor. It's very scary, you know, this is a pretty nice apartment complex and I would never think a firefighter or someone like that would do anything like this. So not only is Corey Steinert in trouble with his employer and with the law, he's also probably in trouble with his landlord because here he broke the gate to get into the complex. Right here, this is a portion of his arrest affidavit. You can see a lot of it's crossed out. That's the portion where he spoke to police, possibly explaining why he did this. Ruby Jones says that she's had trouble with this particular man lurking around her house for more than a year. In fact, it's the reason that she put up her security cameras. I heard a noise over towards the window, and it, once I heard the noise, I immediately ran back to my bedroom to look at the monitor. What Ruby Jones saw when she looked at her surveillance monitors is enough to frighten anyone home alone. This man shows up at the front of her home. We've blurred the video. All the way out. He had everything out. And he was, you know, enjoying himself or whatever you want to call it while he's peering in the window. Next, the man spotted in the back of Ruby's home after taking off his shirt. During the 25-minute visit, he's seen checking the locked door, using a stool to get a look through a window. He's seen ducking at one point as a car passes and at one point running away and then coming right back. It leaves me frightened. Like last night, I, w I, w I couldn't sleep. I had a very uncomfortable night. I was waking up all through the night, checking the monitor and checking the monitor. Ruby called deputies and they copied the video. But today, when the victim's son pointed out the man to us, hanging out with some friends, he was still walking free. We've blurred his face because he hasn't been charged. Do you see me? I got, I got earrings in my ears and stuff. It's not me. OK, that's not you in the no, video. No, no. It's me right here. Look, sure looks like you. Well, it's not me. This right here, I got long hair and stuff like here. Let the man leave me alone. This afternoon, the sheriff's office said they are investigating, but did not elaborate on the case. And it's still unclear whether this man is going to end up behind bars, so all Ruby can do for now is make sure she keeps her doors locked. Several agencies are now searching for a teenager accused of running over an Orange County deputy. Investigators say 15-year-old John Carlos Ortiz ran over Sergeant Marcy Pierce when she tried to arrest him yesterday morning. Also breaking right now, two teenagers on a two-week crime spree were caught early this morning in Panama City Beach. Police found 18-year-old Dalton Hayes and 13-year-old Cheyenne Phillips asleep in a stolen truck. Which of the many lines in our monthly bills this tax cut would affect. It has a lot of uh, issues here. There are a lot of lines on your bill if you read through it. In fact, I've got one right here in my hand. You have to kind of go on to the second page here on most bills. It's all the way down toward the bottom right here. Florida State Communications Tax. That's the one that would be going down. Online Steve Barrett is here to explain what happens next. Well, Wilkerson smiled when the ruling came down on Friday, and then today there's a hearing scheduled to decide if she'll be sent to a mental health facility, and that would be the first step to a potential reunion with her kids.